Hey, this is Illusionist Jason Bishop. I'm back discussing another piece of magic from online. In this case, it is David Copperfield's live performance on America's Got Talent finale. This is where I pull up a piece of magic from online. I haven't usually watched this before, and then I discuss it right here with you guys. I am a professional illusionist. I've been doing that for well over 10 years. I started out in the Poconos and Catskills, and I moved on to colleges around the country, and cruise ships, and then theaters as well. I've also been on the Today Show, CBS Sunday Morning, and now between shows and learning new magic and preparing for shows, etc., I pull up stuff online like this, and I discuss it with you guys. My perspective is not so much about about the names of tricks and the specific techniques. It's more about the performance of magic. It's more about the little things that make people professional, the little things that make your magic stand out and polish it a little bit. So that's the perspective I try to bring to magic. Uh, again, it's a perspective of somebody who's done this for, for quite a long time. And it's fun for me to see this stuff and talk to you guys about it. So let's get right into it. This is David Copperfield live performance on America's Got Talent finale. Here we go. Up next, he's won 20 Emmy Awards. He's walked through the Great Wall of China. He's made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Tonight, he's gonna blow your minds. America, give it up for the legendary David Copperfield. <laughs> saw him perform that on one of his television specials back in the day. I think I had a compilation video of his like 15 years retrospective of magic and that was one of the pieces that he did in it. And it just seemed impossible to me. That's the kind of trick that you look at and you go, that's a camera trick or something. That is absolutely not a camera trick. I can tell you that for sure. I've seen that performed a few times live and I have to say, in magic there are sometimes these tricks that you wish you had come up with and you wish it was yours and you will never do it because A, it's not yours and it would be stealing to do a trick like that, to do that specific trick, but God, you wish you could do it. You wish that you were allowed to or what have you, because that's a beautiful piece of magic to me. And, and I don't mean beautiful in the lyrical sort of dancey sense. I mean, that's just a fantastic, overwhelming piece of magic. That's a real Harley, you know, it's a heavy thing. He appears on it. He's you know, standing up, appearing, he's in this cavernous sort of blank box that's spun and there's, they utilize lights and, and lights are interesting because if you put lights behind things, it would cast a shadow if someone was hiding in there. This thing works on so many levels. It's a massive box and that alone is super impressive on a stage like that. You really can't underestimate the impact of something that big in a full-grown man appearing on a Harley Davidson and there's smoke around. It's just so super impressive and it's so clean and simple. That is one of my favorite illusions, period. I love that trick. I'm glad I got to see it three or four times live. I can't remember, but love that trick. So let's see what he does next. Good evening, good evening. My name is David Copperfield. Let's get started right now. Everybody go like this. Arms out like this. Go like this. Everybody. Do it, do it, do it. Help me out. Go like this. Everybody. Go like this. Just kidding. Thumbs down. People at home, you too. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Everybody. Hands, arms, uh, thumbs down. Take one hand, put it over the other hand. Good job. Lock your fingers together and don't let go for about a month. Don't let go. Give me thumbs down. Everybody help me out. Thumbs down. Tight together. Tight together. Watch me. Go like this. Go like this. 
that's an interesting piece. I don't know who did that first. That's become much more popular. Obviously it's popular among magicians because it doesn't require any props. Specifically what David here is called an in one. An in one trick or an in one performance, an in one act is something that you can do without any additional props. Nothing needs to come on and off stage normally or it's very simple things. But you can go down to the front of the stage, perform this, and oftentimes in a variety show, like in Vegas or something, the dancers are changing or they're changing set pieces, bringing them on and off stage. And I believe that's what happened here actually, is that there is limited space on stages and these are very big productions like AGT here obviously. So they might have, I don't know, 10, 15 acts, whatever it is, five, 10, 15, whatever it is back there. David's props are very large. He might have only very narrow sort of wings on the side to store the props. And so it is a big Tetris game at that point. So he did this in one piece down on stage while they're preparing the next things. It's a perfectly good trick. And actually it's a pretty good trick because it gets the audience involved. They're doing it. They're doing something, they're, you know, they're sort of going like that with their hands and they recognize that they can't do what he just accomplished. So that makes him special at that point. That makes him somebody with a skill that they don't have. And yet he's not rubbing their face in that or something and being arrogant about it. It's fun. He's doing a fun piece of magic and, and they get to participate with it. So sometimes when you look at an in one piece, you think, oh, this is just something I have to do to facilitate moving the props around. But in David's case here, he didn't make that any less spectacular. He made it fun and interesting. Now, if the whole rest of the show was that, it might not be so good. And now he's gonna move on to something else that's larger. Use my secret warehouse. have to appreciate the theatricality of this. I mean, he's got these gobos, these lights uh, on the background moving. He's got these sort of uh, sawhorses that have caution tape on them as if it's a construction site. He said it's his warehouse. The guys with hard hats, he's got the very large illusion in the center there. He's using ATA cases. These are cases that you transport your equipment in. And he's very smart about this. He's using an ATA case then as a prop on stage. And the guys are moving the cases around as if they're construction workers. But he's utilizing probably a case that he actually puts equipment in as sort of a theatrical thing on stage. That way he doesn't have to bring a table, another case for it as such to just make this bigger. And, and that's something that's indicative of David Copperfield. You know, there's several magicians who do the trick that this is. I'm familiar with what this uh, illusion is, but he makes it bigger. He makes it more theatrical and it, it just leaves a bigger impression on you. It makes you feel like you're seeing something special. So that's some you know, a signature of David Copperfield's for sure and, and something that has made him stand out is he doesn't just do, you know, some trick off the shelf. And if he did, he would make it his own and he would make it theatrical and, you know, that's why he's David Copperfield. <laughs> beautiful. This was originally, I believe, designed by Andre Cole, I want to say. Andre and David are very close, and I believe that Andre gave David the rights then to perform this. I'm not sure how many of these were ever made, actually, and how many other magicians do it. I'm, I'm not really sure about that. There's always people who rip off somebody's illusion, and they perform it, and it's a big clunky thing made of plywood that they made in their garage, and it's just terrible. What I think is really neat about this is if you look at the legs, you see that they're sort of small I-beams, actually. It adds to this construction theme that he's going with.
with the table is this almost a raw looking metal, like untreated to some degree. It all has this industrial look. Even the music has this sort of hollow metal sound within it. So it just all focuses on this theme and, and makes one sort of cohesive piece that he's performing here. But expanded at the same time there. So the beginning, he shrunk his head down, you know, and then he shrunk his feet down. And then at the end, he releases both to get larger quickly. That's just a different beat. A young illusionist might think, shrink your head down, shrink your feet down, then reverse it like that. But that's sort of, maybe it's expected by the audience because it's what you did in the beginning. So David changes it up, they both go out at the same time like that. And that just adds a new different element because you always wanna keep something new for your audience. Your audience shouldn't be completely predicting what you're about to do, or it's really not gonna be that interesting for them. He's David Copperfield, he's basically the GOAT. I mean, the guy is just super polished. He knows what he's doing. All of his magic goes up to another level. He's somebody that if you're interested in performing illusions, you probably should watch some David Copperfield, but you know, sometimes it's good to, to watch people to a degree, and then after a while, as you're developing your own character and your own style on stage, to actually stop watching people because you don't want to be influenced by them. In his case, there is a lot to learn from him. There's a lot to learn business-wise from him. There's a lot to learn theatrical-wise, artistically from him. Watching really great shows, Broadway shows, the best shows that you can watch, gives you sort of a playbook, a library of understanding of the components of better shows. A lot of people say watch all the performances that you can watch, including the bad ones. And I think there's some truth to watching bad performances so that you know what to avoid, but if you only could watch good performances or bad performances, I would say watch as many good performances as you possibly can. You know, if you wanna to learn to speak English really well, you don't just listen to the slang, you wanna go and understand how the language is actually put together. You know, this is almost like writing a story, writing a book or something. There are aspects, components, and sort of structures that you need to understand in order to put a show together well or put even an act together well. And watching David Copperfield certainly teaches you the beginning and the middle and the end and how to make things more impactful. Every time I watch David Copperfield, I learn something and it's, it elevates your thinking about magic, especially how his music and his lighting and the sort of special effects and his choreography all converge and come together at various points to create impact at the right points. They're not sort of dissipated, you know, sort of all over the place points. It's at the conclusion or at the sort of middle point or whatever he's trying to convey. All that information can converge at one point that creates this power in the routine. It's a lesson. He has definitely set the bar really high for magic and I'm glad that he inspires magicians to do an even better job on stage and has ushered in a whole new sort of approach to stage magic. So if you would like to learn magic or you need some magic props, you're a magician right now, there's a link below for Vanishing Ink. Vanishing Ink is an online magic store. They have magic for beginners, intermediate, as well as professional illusionists and magicians. That is an affiliate link. So if you click it and you buy something, then I do get a few pennies from that. So that's great. I can fill my piggy bank, I guess. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please destroy the like button as that really does help with the algorithm. If you want to see more of these, then subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one.